Welcome to today's episode and today we're going to talk about how to find yourself or your true self. And if you're feeling lost, confused, frustrated, just not knowing who you are, um, number one, you're not alone. And number two, this episode will be a huge help to you because it was to me and it will contain a lot of the questions that I asked myself and the things that I did to be able to find my true self versus believing what other people thought about me and having different ideas or advice about what I should be doing or who I should be, this will be a massive, massive, huge help to you and will give you a ton of clarity. And I'm just really excited to begin this episode. So we'll dive right into it. So the number one thing is, and the number one promise that I will give you in this episode is, I will give you the number one question that I ask myself in order to know my true self. I'll kind of start with like a little bit of my backstory to this, which is for most of my life, I didn't know who I was. Like if you ask me who I was, I could tell you my name, my phone number, what I did, my job, kind of my likes, dislikes, hobbies. But I feel like, or I felt like those things weren't who I truly was. Like those are things that I did, but that's not who I was. And I would be confused sometimes as to thinking who I actually was. Am I nice? Am I not? Am I determined? Am I not? Am I disciplined? Am I selfless? Like, who am I? Like, when I describe myself, like, I wasn't really sure. And I just assumed that I did, didn't did know forever, and I don't know if I ever would. And sometimes I would know myself. Sometimes I'd be like, yeah, like, I just killed it. Like, I am amazing. Like, I'm awesome. I know what I'm doing. And then a lot of times I'll have the exact opposite effect of not knowing what I'm doing, not knowing who I am and what I believe in and what my values were. And I think a large majority of that is just due to listening to what other people think that I should be thinking or how I should be. And because of that, that includes my parents, my friends, my colleagues, people I went to school with, whatever it was, everyone had their own opinion about me. And I was always more interested in the opinion that they had of me than I was in the opinion that I had of myself. And that's when I started to realize oh, like, I don't know who I am because I'm trying to find it outside of me. I'm trying to ask other people, who do you think I am? Or what opinion do you have of me? Or do you think I'm good at this? Or what do you think I should do with my life? And we're, and for me, I was always seeking external sources to determine what decision I should make in my life and who I should be versus looking within and seeing who I wanted to become. It's crazy because the last person I asked was myself. And it wasn't until I began doing that, that my life began to change for the better. And I wasn't as confused. I wasn't as frustrated. I wasn't as going back and forth between, am I this, am I that? Um, imposter syndrome was very prevalent because I was like, I feel like I'm making progress in my life, but I feel like a fraud. Like I don't feel like I'm, I'm my, my actual self. And that's because I was trying to uphold an image that other people had of me or what I thought that they thought of me versus what I thought of myself and what I wanted to be. And honestly, a person that wasn't just overthinking everything. And so the question that I asked myself, right, or that I began looking into was who am I judging and who am I believing? And so this is actually a process from Byron Katie that I'll just adapt and take one or two questions from that really helped. An exercise to do, which really helped me was looking at who am I judging? what causes ill feelings in me, what causes me to be frustrated. Think about a specific scenario or a person that kind of like frustrates you, that you don't like, that you maybe hate, or um, don't worry, like don't judge yourself for doing it. This is just what it is in the moment. And then I can help you, I can help guide you through the process of bringing you out from that and then kind of elevating above it and seeing it for what it actually is and not allowing those kind of ill feelings that come back in, or if it does, then allowing it to pass. Think about that person that you judge or you don't like or situation or anything like that. Okay, awesome. So you have it in your head. The next thing is what happens or how do you feel when you believe that thought? So what happens when you believe that thought that that person that you hate is a terrible person or they're annoying or they're um, just ignorant or they don't understand you or they just are selfish or whatever it is. It doesn't matter what the thought is. How do you feel when you believe that thought? For most people, 
like for myself, when I believe the thought that this certain person I was working with is like they have no brain, they're just clueless, they're making my life miserable, they just always judge me, they make fun of me, whatever it is. I just felt terrible inside. I felt frustrated. I felt um, unseen. I felt misunderstood. And so it just causes all of these bad feelings inside, like anger, frustration. And that's what I saw. And it wasn't until I saw Byron Katie's question when she asked, who would you be without that thought? So that's the next question, which is, who would you be without that thought? of that negative person or whatever that is. Yes, it can work for any situation as well. And so sit with that for a bit. And for most people, whenever they ask that question of who would they be without that thought, it just creates this space where their true self begins to emerge and begins to surface. And they start saying things like, well, without that thought that I'm, that person's like dumb or stupid, ignorant, whatever it is. I feel free. I feel happy, fulfilled, joyful. I feel energized. I feel just expansive. I feel creative. I don't feel restricted. Um, I feel love. And they start listing all of these positive emotions and it is really eye-opening to see and when they start listening to these things, I tell them that that is their true self. That is who they are. That is their natural essence, their natural state of being, if you will. And when you look back on it to kids or babies, that's how they are, right? They're naturally these things. And then we learn to develop negative feelings and negative beliefs and negative thinking and guilt and shame and all of these different things. But naturally, without those thoughts of judgment or opinions or thinking, we are naturally happy, we are naturally joyful, we're, na we're naturally selfless, we're naturally excited, exuberant, um, and all of these things, and, and peaceful, mostly. Um, so that's what I've come to see, that's what I've realized, is that is who I actually am. And so the key here is without those thoughts, we are naturally all of the things that we want to become. And so it's interesting to see, because I used to try to like become confident or like try to be more positive or like be these other things. And like the act of trying literally means that I feel like I'm not that already, right? If I'm trying to be confident, that means I feel like I'm not confident. And the crazy part about it is that life is very paradoxical in the sense that as soon as I try to become confident, that means I instill the belief in myself that I believe that I'm not confident. Without the thought that I'm not confident, I am automatically confident. It's crazy. Like it, Let that sink in for a bit because that blew my mind. Without the thought that I'm not confident, I am automatically confident. The same thing with the, th the thought that I'm not happy, like without that thought, I'm automatically or naturally happy. And so that's the core essence of this kind of exercise is it helps you tap into who you already are and allows you to let go of trying to become something that you're not. And that's why we're so frustrated. That's why we're so tired. That's why I took so long to try to figure out who I was and with so much turmoil inside, so much frustration, and it took so much effort to try to be something that I'm not, to only to realize that I am everything that I want to become. I just have to let go of the thought that I'm not already that. And so that's an exercise that I really love. Try it out. Listen to this episode again to let it really sink in. This is a little bit more of like a esoteric topic where it's not really talked about. It's, it, it's going to go against most people's thinking, including my own for a while. And so it wasn't until that I started exercising this a couple of times, listening to it a few times, and then really letting it sink in and not trying to think about it, but to just allow it to soak in and just permeate my being. And slowly I began to see. And so hopefully that is the same kind of scenario for you guys. And so with that, I'll just end this episode here. And I can't wait to hear your feedback. Also, if you really enjoyed the episode, as you go through the exercise, if you see something new, if you 
experience something new or see yourself in a different way that you haven't seen before or experience inner peace, happiness, joy, even for a moment, leave a review. That helps me tremendously. And more importantly, it helps get the word out about the podcast so more people's lives can be changed for the better. And with that, share this podcast episode with a person that you love and could really use this. And that's the best gift that you can give anyone, which is the gift of them finding themselves and knowing their true essence. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you on the next one.